Welcome back everybody. It's starting here at Cranky Crow and we're doing part two of our tree. Now as you can see I finished my tree. I didn't put that much detail on my little branches but just to give you an idea I could now get very detailed with all my little branches but I'm going to be covering them up very shortly with my leaves. This is also a really fun thing to do. Now you could use this right this is our our leaf sheet that comes in one of our Cranky Crow kits and I could take this and I could either cut out the pieces or I could um, just put it up wherever I wanted and I could use my transfer paper that comes in the kit and then I could just outline my leaves and put them on wherever I wanted. But I wanted to share something a little bit different with you today so I'm going to put this back up here for now. If you look down here, you can see, first of all, that I've chosen some colors for my leaves. I've got an olive green for my darkest, and I've got a sap green, and to that I've added some yellow, brighten it up a bit. So that's kind of my mid-green. And then I took the sap green and the yellow and I added some white. So everything matches. And then I want a little pop of color. So I've taken some orange. So I could take some orange. I could also take some red. And that, that'll really make my tree fun. So let me get these things out of the way. Now, rather than just draw all my leaves on and then paint them, I'm going to show you some fun things you can do to make your leaves. And I have to tell you, if you're doing this with kids, they love it. So if you have a preschool, daycare, kindergarten, uh, lower elementary school ages, actually even higher levels, uh, they have a lot of fun with this. I remember doing this with a high school class once, and oh my gosh, that was a pretty wild tree. So you can see that I am going to stamp my leaves on. And what I did was I traced my pattern onto some cardboard just to get my shapes, right? And then from that, I could either take foam, and this is just very cheap foam from the dollar store or the craft store, and I traced it over here, and then I cut it out. So voila, that's my first leaf. You can use styrofoam, works very well. Just take a plate, cut it out. So there's another one. Uh, you could use this. This is a little bit more expensive. This is actually a sponge and it's used for acrylic painting. You can get that from pretty much any acrylic or any acrylic section in paint shops. Uh, the reason I like it is because it, it actually has this texture and that's pretty fun. But you could use either side of it. And I've wet it so it's damp. And another thing that's also really fun is this stuff. This is the stuff you put under your utensils so they don't slide around in your drawer and this also makes a really nice uh, sponge effect. So now rather than just dip and paint which could result in a really huge mess I have a few options. I can either use a foam roller again pretty inexpensive from the dollar store or I can use these and Michael sells these little things in bundles also quite reasonable and all I'm going to do, let's start with, let's start with a medium shaped one. And I could use a brush, but I'm going to use a foamy. And I'm going to start with a nice, nice bright one. Put lots of it on. I'm using this board underneath that I'm fine getting pretty messy just to remember if you're working with kids put lots of newspaper down or some kind of tarp or something this is going to be very messy but fun so I'm going to just go like this hold it press keep pressing and then very carefully pull it up how fun is that very very cool so now let's try this with our styrofoam and I'm going to come down now if you're doing this with kids what I would suggest is you get 
one different foamy for each color. So why don't I do that now? When I'm doing it myself, of course, doesn't matter so much. But with kids, very good idea. Have separate containers every way, everywhere, separate foamies. Things will be much better. Let's do a dark one. So I've got my little foamy thing. Just so you can see how this works. Here, oh, I've got a big glop right there, and that, well, that's not gonna work out very well. Okay, why don't I go down here? That looks kind of a good place right now. Again, I'm just pushing everywhere very carefully. Lift her up. Oh, neat. I like that. Now, I can come back later if this really bothers you or bothers anybody else. and. Just take my little brush and I can fix it up. But I like I like the look of this coming through with the stamp one. So to give you an idea, let's just try a couple of the big ones. And I'm going to do the the big piece of foam. And I'm going to do this with this this texture one. Now. Because this is texture, what I should be trying to do, see I'm just skimming across the top because I don't really want I don't really want to obliterate that texture. If I push hard onto the wall, I will. But I do want to make sure I get the edge. Because I want the shape of my leaf. So I'm going around. There, I think I'm gonna leave that and just a little bit more over here. Ooh, let's see. Now, of course, this is a really big one. Where should I put this? I'm going to, I'm actually going to put it there. Yeah, why not? Hey, okay. maybe here. Let's go over here. Maybe my leaf is too big for my tree, but that's okay. That's a sample. You know, as you can imagine, kids love doing this. So, oop, I'm going to push a little more. Cool. I really like that. Uh, one thing you could do later when it's dry, you can have this thing all washed out and then you can cover it with yellow or whatever color you want and then you can do it again. You get a really nice effect one over the other. So let's try one more of my little, my little stamping things here. Of course let's try the orange. This is a fun thing. Probably should be using a, a roller or a wider thingy. I just want to skim the surface with this one. Why don't I switch? Now you know, of course, that I'm not doing this right. I should have it on a piece of palette paper or whatever, rolling it out. Not so right. You get the idea. There. Same thing. I want to make sure that I have the edges, though. That's always very important. Love this stuff for texture. Great with any kind of mixed media painting. Where are we going to put this one? Let me put this one here. It's kind of a nice contrast. Okay. I want to make sure I have my edges. There. Ooh, neat. I like that. Now. I'm going to take a little bit of my paint to fill it in just a little bit more. And I'm just going to dab. I can go right to the edge if I want to define it a little bit more. Okay. The idea. Anyways, those are just a few little techniques. Now, let's say you're more of a purist and you just want to paint your leaves on. Then of course you can just take your brush, maybe you've either traced or drawn your shapes, and at this point make sure you're going over 
you know, I could be stamping these, painting these, whatever I'm doing. Maybe if I'm painting, I might have to come back and give them two coats. But you want to overlap, right? And then up here, I've got my little ones. Some of them are going to be touching the branches. If you're not sure, you can look at pictures of leaves and how they how they go. But you're just going to slowly start building it up. Personally, I like the look of the stamped one. And if I were going to be completing this whole tree, that's probably what I'd be doing. But, you know, you can spend the whole day or weekend working on these leaves that take a long time, but they're sure fun. Get there. Then, of course, I can be changing my colors. Little tiny ones. here, just wherever I like it, touching, overlapping, and what I usually do with leaves is I'll paint on probably something like 50 for a tree this size, and then I'll go do something else for a while, and then I'll come back, and I'll just keep adding. Now, as you can imagine, when you're stamping, this goes a lot faster, right? So that's another big advantage of stamping. Always make sure you put some in front of the brown. So there you have it. There's some ideas for adding leaves. What I would suggest, one final suggestion, is once you have kind of a framework on, don't finish it because you're probably going to start adding owls or some other little critters, some little mice, whatever you're going to put in here, some other kind of birds. Maybe you're going to have a nest. Whatever part of your mural it's going to be, you need to be holding up your little critters. And you may have already done that. In this case, I wouldn't have. I would have put my leaves everywhere. And then, you know, as you can see up there with these little owls, I would be cutting out my owl patterns and just putting them everywhere to see what they look like. After I get my owls kind of in place, then I would go back and I would add some more leaves. Uh, I wouldn't finish the leaves, I'd finish the owls, and then I'd probably put my finishing touches on my leaves. All right? Thank you very much.